And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr., thanking you as always on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray the Lord is leading you as we enter, in, as we take part in this Father's Day weekend. Uh, it's Father's Day, people. It's, it's the time where we recognize our fathers that are in our lives, that God has blessed us with, who are living the life according to Jesus Christ. And we are very much aware that everybody's experience is different, no different than our mothers. There's a different, everybody has a different experience with their parents. But today we want to recognize the fathers that we know are doing it right, that are getting it right, and at least working hard at trying. <laughs> That's what we need you to do, work hard at trying. And so I want to recognize my father right now because uh, it's my show. I want to recognize Reverend R.C. Allen Sr. out of Kenbridge, Virginia, who is the father of Six, I am the oldest, and we just want to let you know on behalf of the, the six that we appreciate everything you've done for us. Uh, you have been a, uh, a mentor, a model, a role model, uh, a friend, a great confidant, a great ear at times, um, you know, and I've learned so much from you just by watching. A lot of times we didn't do a lot of talking. I did a lot of watching, and I'm appreciative of everything you've done for me. I've learned so much uh, in regards to ministry, in regards to my walk with Jesus at this capacity from you. And I just want to let you know that we all love you. I love you. And I thank you for being the father that God has made you. And I pray that you all out there are doing the same uh, with your father, that you are making those phone calls, that you're sending those emails, maybe putting those Facebook posts out there, whatever. However you communicate with dad, make sure you reach out to dad. Make sure you do that. All right, let's get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from Psalm 103, 13. Psalm 103, 13 reads as follows. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And that fear is definitely a healthy fear out of respect because that is God, our father, the one who made us all, the one who is ordering our steps and who the one who gave his son, Jesus Christ, to make sure that we did not fall away in depravity and in our own despair, in the, let alone face his wrath. And we just want to give thanks to an almighty God for doing what he did. I thank God for Jesus Christ, who came to live amongst us, to give us his word, and was the word, and is the word. You know, And I, I just want you to know, uh, if you're out there, that if you don't have a father, to say happy Father's Day too. Look up and let God know happy Father's Day. And you might need prayer. You might need prayer about your father experience or your fatherhood experience. We want you to go to get-prayer.com, get-prayer.com, and submit your prayer request there. We definitely would love to hear from you. We would love to see what we can do to come alongside you and just encourage you in your fatherhood experience or maybe in your experience with your father. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, we are definitely standing by ready to assist where needed. And we want to pray for y'all right now. We definitely want to pray for you as we move along on this lovely Father's Day weekend. Hope you dads out there are getting uh, maybe a grilled burger or maybe a nice dinner or maybe an updated tie or socks, whatever the case is. I just hope your family is showing some kind of appreciation for the things that you do because we all out here be trying to make it happen. Amen? Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather today thanking you for the gift of fatherhood. We celebrate the fathers, the grandfathers, and the father figures who have loved, guided, and supported us. Lord, we ask your blessings upon them today and always. Grant them wisdom, strength, and patience as they lead their families. We lift up those who may find this day difficult, those who have lost fathers, those who have strained relationships, and those who long to be fathers. Surround them with your comfort and your peace. Help all fathers to reflect on your love and compassion, guiding their children in your ways, Lord Jesus. May they find joy and fulfillment in their role, knowing that they are making a difference in the lives of their families. We thank you for your unfailing love and guidance, our perfect example of fatherhood, as we continue, Lord, recognizing our Father today, may our hearts be open to your word, and may we honor you, Jesus Christ, in all that we do. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
Today our message is crossing the T's and dotting the I's. How Jesus equips fathers. Crossing the T's and dotting the I's. This is something that every father is working to do every day that we get up and that, that any day that God grants us another day to work. We're constantly out here trying to make sure we're checking all the boxes as dads. We're out here constantly making sure that we're doing everything we need to do with our children. Are we reminding them of all the right things they need to do as they grow into adulthood? I know I do it. I'm constantly making sure, well, have I told my sons this? Have I taught them that? Have I, have I showed them how to do this right here? And it's a constant thing in the mind of a father to make sure that our children are completely equipped for the world that they're walking into, a world that has lost its way one that rejects God and loves chaos and evil. And our text comes from Matthew 7, 24 through 27, which reads as follows. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The, rock came, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for all the fathers who are following you. We thank you for your example. We thank you for the model that you presented and are consistently presenting in our lives. We thank you for the tools you equip us with. We thank you for the times where no one understands and we're by ourselves in our thoughts. Encourage those fathers who need it, Lord. Let them know they're not alone. Let them know they're more than just a paycheck. Let them know they're more than just a provider. They're people too. And in a world that does not recognize fatherhood too much, where the media may worship motherhood in an unhealthy way, for that matter, parenting as fathers and mothers out here, we pray that it's put back in its proper context under your will and your way, Lord, and that the children see it so that they may know who you are. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus here is placing the understanding of his word and in application into the set of building a foundation. He is showing us that it's not just one thing to come to church and hear God's word. It's also just as important to apply it to our homes as fathers. But what does that look like, though, when it comes to applying these words that Jesus has told us to our homes? If we're going to be godly fathers, there are several elements into the application we need to consider, and that's what we're going to go over today. And that begins with building on a solid foundation. Jesus highlights the importance of building on a solid foundation. Scripture says, like a wise man who built his house on the rock. For fathers, this means more than just providing physical security. It involves establishing a home rooted in the truth of, of Jesus Christ. A father equipped by Jesus understands that the stability and well-being of his family depends on this spiritual foundation. The reason why you got a lot of fathers out there with broken homes and poor leadership is because the foundation was not built spiritually. They got the money, they got the education, and they got the house, and they got the cars, but yet they're still they're on, they're living on shaky ground because they didn't have Christ. And I've come across a lot of fathers that way where they got everything, the big house, the nice cars, and the, the swimming pool in the back, but yet the house is in chaos. Why is that? Because Jesus 
was not the foundation. Jesus was not the cornerstone. Instead, he remains in these houses as the rejected stone. By prioritizing prayer, scripture, and godly principles, he must ensure his family can withstand the emotional and spiritual challenges that arise. The solid foundation promotes trust, peace, and a sense of safety that transcends material circumstances. But what are those elements? What do those, what do those elements look like, though? Let's start with spiritual leadership. The father grounded in Christ serves as the spiritual leader of his household. The role requires him to be well versed in scripture and to live out his teachings consistently. It's one thing for a father to quote scripture. It's another thing for the children not to see the scripture lived out. It's one thing for the father to get everybody up and go to church and go to Bible study and go to Awana and all these programs. But it's another thing when the children don't see it executed in his lifestyle. He prioritizes the family devotions, prayer, worship, setting an example for his children. By doing so, he creates the home environment where faith is not just a part of life, but is the core around which everything else evolves. Jesus Christ should be the center of your universe. He should be the head of your household, and everything else is nothing more than a moon rotating around it. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the sun and everything else rotates around that sun to get light for revelation, energy, growth, and sustenance for things to grow. The spiritual leadership fosters a sense of purpose and direction for the entire family. And then we have the emotional stability. The foundation of Christ's teachings provides emotional stability in a world often marked by this chaos and stress. When a father relies on the words of Jesus Christ as his foundation, he is better equipped to handle the emotional ups and downs that this world brings. His trust in God's promises allows him to remain calm and composed in the worst of situations, providing a steady and reassuring presence for his family. This emotional stability is crucial for the children who look to their parents for security and reassurance. The kids are looking for dad to be there. But dad has to be there with the word. Because I've told my sons a couple of times, I don't have the answers. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm going to the Lord to get the answers. As a leader, I don't know by itself can no longer exist. And that's what we get a lot of out here in these streets. Just, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. But you're not seeking biblical instruction. You're not seeking the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal to you how to solve your problems. Your children would respect you more as a biblical father if you simply said, I don't know, but I'm going to go pray about it. They see the active mind of prayer, the active understanding that dad is not doing this by himself, but he has the same God that he's telling us to trust. And that's a great thing. And then there is the moral compass. Building on a solid foundation means establishing a clear moral compass for the family. A father equipped by Jesus teaches his children right from wrong based on biblical principles. This moral framework helps the kids develop a strong sense of ethics and integrity. They learn to make decisions that honor God and reflect his love and justice. A father who lives out these values consistently provides a powerful model for his children, helping them to internalize these principles and apply them in their own lives. The Bible says you train up a child, not when they're 16, you train them from the youth. Why? That way they don't depart God's word. Why? Because it's now part of their DNA framework. Don't sit there and tell me about how you don't want to impose your beliefs on your children. You better impose your beliefs on your children or someone else will impose their beliefs on your children and you will no longer have a child. Get with it, fathers. 
don't sit there and cop out on the responsibilities because for whatever reason, you don't think you can do it. Get some confidence. God bless you with smart kids, beautiful kids. Get some confidence in your fatherhood and get into your child's life. It's not about how much money you have in the bank and get them what they want and when they want it, but come alongside them in their life experience. I came alongside my sons in their life experience from kindergarten, primary school, middle school, high school, and now college. And I've got the fruits to show that it works. I got the fruits to show it. If you want that tree to bear fruit, if you want that vine to bear fruit, you gotta trust in it, water it, cultivate, prune when needed. <laughs> Cause sometimes some pruning is needed. Cause if you don't prune, someone else is gonna alter what's going on in your house. Trust God's way and he will lead the way cause he is the way. And then there is the resilience and adaptability. A solid foundation in Christ also means resilience and being able to adapt in the face of change. Life is full of unexpected events and challenges, but a family rooted in Christ by the father who leads the home can adapt and thrive. The father's faith in God's sovereignty and goodness allows him to approach change with confidence and hope. He teaches his family to trust God's plan and be flexible, knowing that God works in all things together for the good of those who love him, Romans 8, 28. This resilience is crucial, is a crucial trait that helps families navigate life's craziness with grace and faith. And then there is the intergenerational impact. The father who builds his family on the foundation of Jesus Christ creates an intergenerational impact. What do I mean by that? The values and principles he instills in his children can be passed down to future generations. His commitment to living out the teachings of Jesus influences not only his immediate family, but also his grandchildren and beyond. This is a legacy of faith and stability can, that can shape the spiritual trajectory of entire generations, creating a lasting impact that extends far beyond his lifetime. But not only is there the understanding of building on a solid foundation, there's also practicing obedience and wisdom. Fathers, do you practice obedience and wisdom? Jesus emphasized not just hearing his words, but putting them into practice. Scripture says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. Fathers equipped by Jesus recognize the importance of embodying the values and teachings of Jesus in everyday life. This means making ethical decisions, showing love and respect in relationships, and modeling Christ-like behavior. Just like I told the mothers during Mother's Day, I'll tell the dads the same thing, for it is written in James 1.22, do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. By doing so, you teach your children the value of integrity and wisdom, practicing Obedience to God's word fosters the environment where kids can learn to trust and follow God themselves, seeing firsthand the blessings that come from living a life aligned with his will. I've always said that in a, in a household, fatherhood begins like it does in God's word. You have Old Testament where the people are learning how to live in the will of God, in the realm of God here on earth. Everything is understanding what to do, how to do it, what to say, how to say it, how to interact with God, what not to do. Don't get distracted. Don't get turned away. You get punished. You come back. And then you have this New Testament fatherhood that we see here where Jesus comes on the scene and now we're getting relationship building. We're, we're walking alongside the word. We're, we're taking in the lessons and the parables and the hope and the promise. In an Old Testament house, you are the they're learning how to live in your house 
talk in your house, operate in your house, the manners, the trust, the obedience. And then about 13 or 14, then they want to get that relationship. Why, dad, do you wear blue all, blue all the time or red all the time? And why do, why do you buy pizza for mom on her birthday? And why do you buy a stuffed animal for her for Christmas? What are these things about? They're trying to learn more about you as they mature into young believers. And that is where the relationship building really begins because the first portion of the kid's life they want to simply honor you and show you respect and they want to do for you they want to do everything for dad and then as they get older now they're trying to understand dad it's not as much about the doing part than it is about the knowing part and when we get to the knowing part it's super cool because you start experiencing life with your children at a level that is it's just awesome you know, I remember one evening in Virginia Beach, me and my sons, we were cruising Virginia Beach with some fries and a mango smoothie, just talking life. One of the best nights of my life. I, I always cherish that night because it was when I realized my kids are growing up and we're hanging out and, we're, and they're doing all the right things. And I just gave God the glory for that because it was such a great experience that night. My wife was laughing. It's like, what were y'all doing out there? I said, nothing. We were just cruising. I was trying to get them to talk to girls and <laughs> seeing how, seeing what the game was like. <laughs> we had a great time. And I really hope that you're having the same fatherhood experience. But if you're not, it's because you didn't put it there. You got to put it there. Don't sit there and let, just let life pass you by and watch your kids doing any old thing and saying, well, you know, this is what they want to do. I want to honor and respect their wishes. No, your kids desire, they crave your leadership. Engage that, please. Jesus emphasized not just hearing his words, but putting them into practice. Scripture says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. Fathers equipped by Jesus recognize the importance of the values and teachings of Christ in everyday life. How do they recognize that? First of all, they lead by example. A father who practices obedience to Christ sets the powerful example for his family. His actions speak louder than words, showing his children the importance of living a life that honors God. Whether it's through an honesty in business dealings, kindness in relationships, or diligence in responsibilities, his commitment to follow Christ's teachings becomes a living testimony. It goes beyond Sundays and Wednesdays and sometimes Saturdays. This model Modeling helps children understand that faith is not just a set of beliefs, but a way of life that influences everyday decisions and actions. And then there is the daily application. Putting the words of Christ to practice involves integrating biblical principles and going about it in a way that people can, that, that the family can see the routines and decisions. This means a father makes prayer, reading the Bible, and seeking God's guidance a regular part of life. And then there's cultivating wisdom. Practicing obedience brings about the understanding of growing this wisdom. Fathers continually align their lives with God's word. They develop discernment and understanding. And this is crucial for making sound decisions and providing godly counsel to their children. And then there's the endurance through adversity. What did the scripture say? The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall. Matthew 7, 25. Likewise, Jesus equips the fathers with resilience needed to lead their families through life's inevitable trials. This resilience is not merely about enduring hardships, but about doing so with grace and faith. A father grounded in Christ can provide hope and direction when the family faces financial difficulties, health crises, or personal losses, and I, like you, have seen that in our life. And then finally, there is the influence through integrity. The contrast between the wise and the foolish builders underscores the importance of the integrity. Scripture says this, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Verse 26, Fathers equipped by Jesus strive to maintain integrity in all aspects of their life. This means being honest, keeping promises, and consistently aligning with values. Such integrity builds a legacy of trust and respect. 
profoundly impacting the children and community by living a life in integrity. Fathers not only secure their own family's future, but also set a great example for others, demonstrating their the power, the transforming power of Jesus Christ. And this is the ripple effect that extends beyond the immediate family, fostering this culture of integrity and faithfulness in the broader community. We need fathers in the community that follow the Lord. We need fathers that trust the Lord. Are you out there? Stand up and be recognized on your day because the Lord sees you, we see you, and we appreciate you because we know that we know that we know that you're out here and you're doing everything you can not to be the house that was built on a shaky foundation and crashed. We've got so many houses out here that have crashed and it's embarrassing because those fathers now see the mistakes they've made through what has they experienced and they're thinking they cannot be redeemed. You can be redeemed, fathers. Here's what you just gotta do. You gotta look up and recognize that you are a sinner that needs saving. You need to recognize the fact that you need to get to a church. You need to talk to a pastor. Come alongside a church community that can uplift and build you up. You need to be restored into the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and let the Lord know that I'm here. I'm available now. Yes, I've made mistakes. Yes, I made poor choices, but Lord, help me turn this thing around. You blessed me with this beautiful wife. You've blessed me with these great kids. Help me bring them to you through all of our foolishness. And Jesus Christ can do that. Jesus Christ can help you right now today if you trust and follow him. And if there's anything that we can do to help you get to where you need to be, which is at the cross of Christ, <laughs> contact us by the information given in the earth show earlier get dash prayer.com people we got a way to contact you you know but you got to reach out to us first and let us know you're ready to take this step so for all the dads out there may god bless you may heaven smile upon you and god willing we will talk to you next week enjoy your father's day weekend you deserve it you take care